Greetings to our brethren, everyone who is in the four corners of the earth. I'm going to just go ahead and bring my sister in. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. Shabbat, shabbat shalom, sis. Yes, I said just um this this morning, I am still recovering. This was a busy, 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 busy week for um Prina and I. I'm still tired, but praise the praise to Yah. Praise to Yah for um being here another day. Another yeah. Sabbath. I'm grateful. I said, I don't care how busy I am. I said, I'm going to go ahead and get this message out. Right. So as you all, please bear with me. You probably can hear it in my voice. I'm, I feel like I'm still sleeping, even though we can ready to do this teaching. But glory to Yah. Yeah. Um, we give honor to the our Father Yah, who is head over all, and our Master, Yusha Mashiach. We greet you, all of our brethren. Who are here with us today? Thank you for. Um, we don't take it light because we've been we've been getting um, a lot of emails, and for those of you who have been emailing the ministry, and we have not responded back as quickly as I used. Please just um, forgive me. Please uh, just be patient with us since uh, my transition back into you know the workplace it has been i'm trying to just make the adjustment with my time i've been praying to the father that he would you know give me provision so that i'm can continue not only doing the things that i was doing before but um that i want to make sure that i do not lose my my fire that i'm still able to spend that time and so i've been making sure that i'm still doing that and so although the messages have been shorter, I feel like to me, they've been more uh, pack. They've been very impactful mm -hmm. um, because of the nature of how it's been blessing people. I've, we've been getting a lot of emails from people with the, uh, the works of the law, understanding the two laws, uh, the writings of um, the apostle Paul. We've been getting a mm -hmm. lot of messages from brethren who are um, feeling blessed because of the messages that have been brought forth and bringing out the two laws that Paul is speaking of and helping them to understand the difference between the works of the law and the, you know, which is the Levitical law and also the law of Yah, understanding what it means to be um, under the law or under the penalty of the law, um, helping them to understand that Paul is speaking of two different laws and these two different laws that he's speaking of help bring greater clarity to what law our Messiah nailed to the tree and what law um, he did away with. And it wasn't the law of Yah. And so when we understand this, it really does open up and bring clarity to the rest of the, his writings. When you understand that in Romans chapter six, seven, and eight, and specifically seven and eight, Paul is speaking of two different laws. And these two different laws, um, they bring clarity to what Messiah came to do and moving forward, what he came, what his death uh, did in fulfilling the law, not removing the law of Yah, but fulfilling it bringing greater understanding to it, um, making sure when he came here that we all understood that he didn't come to do away with his mm -hmm. father's law. That's why he says, think not. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make that clear. And so I'm grateful. And I'm taking the time to just thank everyone who's been emailing us because some of the responses have been kind of late because of it's just been really, really busy since I've been returning. So Please be patient with us. We do read all of the emails and I'm going to take the time today to go through. So if you've been writing the ministry, we I will be writing, we'll be responding today. Um, so I just wanted to just get the house rules <laughs> out of the way. And I wanted to thank everyone. I'm like elated that so many people are saying how this has, this these uh, messages that we've been doing on Paul 
has really helped them to understand what it means to be under the law, especially that um, elevator example. Yeah. Are you still there, sis? Yes, yes. Oh, I didn't yes. hear anything. Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, and, and you know, um, no, I was letting you finish. Um, it is, it is a blessing when you are able, because it helped me understand it as well. And I was, I remember me and you were talking yesterday and I, and we were talking and I, and I just mentioned that all these things are like a foreshadow of things to come. You know, when we, when, um, we were talking about, um, the Levitical law, how it was a trainer, you right. know, Until and, Messiah came. Yes. Messiah came. Then, yeah. We talked about if you're, that's why Paul said, that if you're still relying on the works of the law, mm -hmm. meaning the Levitical law, mm -hmm. not if you're still relying on the Torah, the teachings and instructions of Yah, if you're still relying on the works of the law, if you're mm -hmm. still relying on your own efforts to save yourself by through sacrificing the blood of both goats and bulls, yeah. then that's why he said you're still under a curse because the blood of goats and bulls, according to Hebrew, was not good enough mm -hmm. to save us eternally only Yahushua's blood could do that only his blood was clean enough and righteous enough to to atone for sin um once and for all and Absolutely. no animal no man's blood no was righteous or good enough to do that that's the reason why we had they had to keep doing it yearly going to you know offer up animals for the sacrifice you know for the atonement of the people for the forgiveness of their sins if it was good enough then there would have been no need for messiah to come right so yes. that's why i said if you're still relying on the works of the law you're still under a curse so people in the church take that as oh if you um keeping that old law if you keeping the old testament the the, the law of yah then you under a curse if you're cursed if you do that and so we have messed things up it is really important for yeah. us to understand really understanding paul that's why it says writings are under, hard to understand and those who are unlearned twist them and so this is not about that today i just wanted to just open up just thanking everyone who has been responding i'm so happy yeah and joyful in my heart to hear that these messages about paul and his writings and the clarity that is brought, it has brought you more understanding. And, and we're grateful for that. I give all yeah, glory to all you. They are all praises to Yah. And so let's get started. I feel like I'm finally waking up now. <laughs> and so we're going to get started with today's message. And so today's message um, is entitled, Are You Offended in me are you offended in me are you offended and we're speaking of messiah okay we're speaking of messiah we're speaking of our master yahushua um about the offense that his ministry brought that he brought in general when he came to this earth and so we're gonna be primarily today we do have some um, related precepts, but we're going to be primarily today in uh, reading a portion in Matthew chapter 11, okay? And so, and we're going to be talking um, and spending some time uh, speaking about John. I want to bring out something that uh, I was brought to this chapter and I something I had not noticed and I was telling my sis yesterday that you know it was something that was brought out that i had not paid attention to something that i had not seen this was something that i had not, that i had not seen or had not paid attention and i'm wondering how did i miss this and so it was brought out for a reason and so i pray that this message today will bring comfort will bring hope will bring understanding of why certain things must happen in our lives while we may go through certain things. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring this message out, okay, as it was given to me. And it happened, and we're reading Matthew 11. And it happened when Yahushua finished commanding his 12 disciples, he left there to teach and to proclaim in their cities. But hearing in the prison 
of the works of the Messiah, sending two of his disciples. John said to him, so John, um, Yahushua is commanding his disciples. He's teaching, he's proclaiming in their cities and hearing the works of the Messiah, John, and this is speaking of John, he's hearing the works of the Messiah. He sends two of his disciples, the John, I'm not speaking of John the Baptist. John the Baptist sends two of his disciples to uh, Yahushua. And so he's sitting in prison, okay? And this is what he sends his disciples to ask Yahushua. Let me say this again. John the Baptist is sitting in prison and he's hearing of the works of Messiah. And so it tells you in Matthew 11, verse two, that John the Baptist sends two of his disciples to Messiah, to Yahushua, okay? And this is what he says. This is, the, this is what he, um, he sends his disciples to ask this question. And I'm gonna put this question up on the screen. This is what he sends his two disciples to Messiah to ask him this question. I want you to just look at that for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you read it before I read it. So I'm gonna give you a second to go ahead and read it. So I was floored. I had never seen this before. John the Baptist, the one who was a forerunner, the one that was crying in the wilderness. He said, are you the one to come or are we to look for another? Let me repeat this again. John is in prison and hearing about the works of Messiah. He sends two of his disciples to Messiah to ask him, are you the one to come? Or are we to look for another? Meaning, are you the coming one? Are you the one who is and was and is to come? Are you the one that we have been expecting? The one we've been waiting on? Or should we be looking for someone else? Because if you're not the Messiah, that I've been preaching about. Should we look to another? So I've never seen this in scripture before. Let's unpack this because this is not a simple thing here. Let's think for a moment. We gotta think, what is John really asking because this is John the Baptist we've all heard this read it in scripture this is the same John the Baptist who spent his entire life preparing the way for Yahushua he's crying out in the wilderness he's preaching to the people to repent turn and from their sins and he's preaching about the coming kingdom. He's preaching about this Messiah that he's now having doubts about. He spent his entire life. This has been his entire ministry is to be the forerunner. You see, John the Baptist was born for the sole purpose of this one and only mission. And that was to prepare the way for Yahushua, to prepare the way for the coming Messiah and to usher in the arrival of Yahushua's ministry on earth. Yet he's asking, are you the one to come now? Are you, are you the one to come? Are you the one 
that I've been preaching about? See, John, John's father was Zacharias and Elizabeth. His father was a Levitical priest. He was well-versed in scripture. So I'm sure he knew what his mission was. Because again, he he already he had already seen Yahusha. So when he's asking this question that you're looking on looking at on the screen, he's already seen Yahusha. He baptized them. He's already immersed them and called him the Lamb of God, the Lamb of Yah. So how is he asking this question now? This has been his mission, his ministry. His parents were well aware of what he was going to do. He was well aware. And so let's keep reading to see how Yahushua responds to John's question that was sent to him through his disciples. We're now reading verse four through six. We're still in Matthew 11. And answering Yahushua said to them, go back to John and report what you hear and have seen. So Yahushua is telling the two disciples that John sent to him, I want you to go back to John and I want you to report what you hear and what you've seen. Okay, this is what he's saying. This is what he says to him. This is how he responds to John's questioning of, are you the coming one or should we look to another? He said, go back to John and you report this. This is what I want you to report. You tell him, verse five, that the blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Those who are poor now have hope. And then he says, blessed is the one who was not offended in me. And so some of you may be thinking, did the Messiah answer John's question? He asked them, are you the Ma Messiah? Are you the coming one? Or should we look to another? He didn't say, yes, I am. No, I'm not. He didn't give him a yes or no answer. He responded with verse five that I have highlighted in, ye in yellow. The blind now receive sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The good news is preached to the poor. And so did he answer? Did Messiah answer John's question? Yes. What you need to understand in just looking at verse five, what Yahushua did, he didn't give him a yes, I am. Yahushua pointed John back to the word of Yah. Let me say this again. Yahushua didn't give John's disciples a yes, I am the Messiah. Yes, I am. He pointed John back to the word of Yah because the prophet Isaiah prophesied of the Messiah and what he would do when he came. Did you understand what I just said? He pointed him back to the word. He didn't defend himself. He didn't say, yes, I am. Or how could you say that? He pointed him back to the word. Let's read Isaiah 35, verse five through six. Isaiah 35 and five reads, then the eyes of the blind shall be open and the ears of the deaf open. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For water shall break out in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And so our Messiah reminded John of the very things that we all should be mindful of today. 
And that is when in doubt, when we have questions about him, about his word, we go back to the word of Yah for confirmation. He didn't send them to a person. He pointed them back to the word. He quoted Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied about Messiah. He prophesied about him. He prophesied and he spoke of what Messiah would do when he came. You understand what I'm saying? What would he be doing when he came? This is what Isaiah is saying. Look again, Isaiah 35 and 5. The eyes of the blind will be open. The deaf, the ears of the deaf will be open. The lame, you know, not in walking, they're going to leap like a deer. You ever seen a deer leap? The tongue of the dumb shall sing. The waters shall break out in the wilderness and streams in the desert. When he come, even, even the earth is going to be affected. Everything is going to be affected by his coming. And so remember, the testimony of Yahusha, according to Revelations 19 and 10, the, te the testimony of Yahusha is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Yahusha is the spirit of prophecy. That is prophecy. The testimony of Yahusha. And so he, Yahusha's answer, he answers John the Baptist's question about who he is by pointing him back to what the scripture says about the coming Messiah and what he would do once he arrived. And so it is Isaiah who prophesied about what Messiah would do. And we have to ask the question, what is the Messiah doing? He's doing exactly what the prophet Isaiah said he would do. <laughs> Giving sight to the blind, allowing the lame to walk. He's cleansing the lepers. He's allowing the deaf to hear. He's performing all these miracles. He's raising the dead. He's giving hope to the poor through preaching the good news of the coming kingdom of Yah. And so John the Baptist, he was the forerunner. This, these are the things that he was preaching. He was the one who would announce the coming of the Messiah. Yet he's asking this question. Are you the coming one? And so when we think about a king, even as we speak about announcing, because John the Baptist was the forerunner, he was the one that would announce the ministry of the coming king, of our Messiah. And so I want you to think about an earthly king, even an earthly king before his arrival. He is announced before he's coming. You would think about even like before the president is coming, they're announcing it. You know, I saw it on the news, you know, about the president when he was here the other day and even Trump, he's not the president right now, but yet they're announcing his coming. He was here, I think yesterday or something like that. And so even an earthly king or someone of high authority, before they're coming, they are announced. And so this is what John is doing. And when a, when a king is announced and before, they're, before they come, they're, you're told of what is required. There's certain criteria. You can't just enter into the presence of a king or someone of, of authority. You can't just enter into the presence of the president. You can't, they have security. You know, they, they're watched. They're surrounded by others. They're not just coming alone. So you don't have just easy access to those of high authority. Okay. And John the Baptist is announcing the coming of our master, Yahusha, the Messiah. 
And so likewise, John the Baptist, he met this criteria. He met this criteria as we would announce an earthly king or someone authority on earth. John met the criteria to do this. This was his mission. And he even immersed. For those of you who don't know, that means to be baptized. He baptized him. He immersed him in water. He immersed, John the Baptist immersed the Messiah, Yahushua. And so Yahushua had to remind him of what the word has said about him and what the word says that he would do. He had to remind him. He had to remind him of what the word said that he would do. And so when we think about when we're going through things in life, and I'm going to use myself to be honest, because I'm going to be very transparent with you. For those of you who've been with the ministry for a while, at least two years, you know of my two over two year trial where the Father Yah took me from my previous job that I had. And he pastured me the entire time for over two years. I didn't have a job, money coming in. Literally, I was living off of the love offering of brothers and sisters who was caring for me. Y'all sent the ravens. I was, I can't, I can't tell you over two years how many jobs Thousands upon thousands of jobs I've applied for and this was rejection. And this has nothing to do with, oh, she couldn't, no. Very educated, almost five college degrees, two masters, five, four classes short of a doctoral. So it has nothing to do with that. He took me away because he was pastoring me and there were things that he wanted to get out to his people, things that he wanted to work out of me, things that he he wanted. I was going through my trial, um, my Job-like experience, if you want to call it that. But he was pastoring me. And I literally had to pin on him for everything. He gave me enough for each in his own day. Teaching me how to, I didn't think, I felt like I trusted him, but I really had to learn how to trust him because I was in my wilderness season, but I was still in my wilderness season proclaiming the good news of Messiah, still preaching on salvation and repentance, still doing the work of the ministry. I learned how to sit in his presence even more. My relationship with him is stronger than it's ever been. But it was also the most traumatic and the hardest thing that I've ever done. I can't tell you how many days I cried. Well, I cried so much that I had no more tears. I just wail in my spirit. I wail in my soul. Stand up nice, not sleeping. It was a lot. And he opened the door when he was ready. And I'm going to be honest, there were days, there were times when my sis had to talk to me because I'm like, I'm thinking in my mind, did he forget about me? I'm seeing the other people being elevated. And then you see the wicked prevailing and the wicked getting the, the high paying jobs. I'm like, what about me? I'm thinking I've been in this for a long time. And it didn't happen right away. But once it started heading towards the two-year mark, when you when you on the brink of uh of being thrown out of your home, when you don't have money for food and you have to wait on others, and during this time, I had my days where I'm thinking, I know who you are. But I'm thinking, have you left me? You haven't forsaken me, have you? You do. There's a time when doubt, the enemy <clears throat> was working on me and doubt tried to creep in and I had to cast down those imagination. I had to cast down those thoughts. There are times when my sis had to speak to me 
And I'm like, so we have all, if we're going to keep it real today, all, if you've been in the situation, if you've been in the trial, if you've been sick and near death, if you've been out of work, if you've been, you know, nearly evicted, nearly thrown out of your home, nearly getting your car repossessed, nearly going, going through something where you're suffering, you're going through things and you're like, why is it he hearing me? I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm doing all of these things and he hasn't moved yet. Why is he allowing me to go through this? Why am I suffering like this? I serve you. Why am I suffering like this? Why you had John is in prison asking these questions. He's sitting in prison. Like, okay, if you to come along, why am I sitting in here? Why aren't you saving me? Why aren't you saving me? If you're here, if you're him and you're here, why, why haven't you come to save me? Why am I in prison unlawfully? And so I want you to think about that as John, before we judge, how's he doing that? How many of you have ever been in a situation and you waiting for him to come? And sometimes he is in the midnight hour and it's sometimes he you praying and fasting and his will is still for you to suffer. It's still not going to be the outcome that you want. And you begin to doubt will, it, it can easily creep in when we're going through things. And so this is what's happening here. And this is why I said, I had never seen this. I had never seen John ask this question before. I'd never seen him ask this question before. Let's continue reading Matthew 11, verse seven. <clears throat> so again, Yahushua points, he didn't defend himself and say, yes, go tell John, that I am him, I am, I'm the Messiah. He, he pointed him back to the word. He pointed him to the word. What does the word of Yah say about Messiah? That's what he did. He pointed him back to the word. And when we have doubt about him, if we have doubt or questions, we should follow that same example, what you should just say. Is to go back to the word. What does the word of Yah say? When I have questions about certain things, when people say, well, I've been praying and he ain't answer me. If you have the word of Yah, that is every, that's the answer to everything in life. We might not always like the answer, but it's there. So he answers him with a word. And that's an example. Isaiah prophesied in the word about Messiah and what he would be doing when he came. And so he said, I'm not going to say I am. I'm not going to say, yes, I am. He began to tell him, look, the, go report to him the things you're seeing, the things that you're hearing. He's quoting Isaiah. Am I not doing these things? Verse seven, Matthew 11, verse seven. But as these were going, Yahushua began to say to the crowds about John. So now he's speaking to their crowd. He's addressing the crowds about John the Baptist. He said, what did you go into the wilderness to see? What did you go into the wilderness to see? Because John the Baptist, again, he's in the wilderness, preparing the people, preparing and ushering in the ministry of the Messiah. He said, what did you, you should ask the people, what did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed being shaken with the wind? Is that what you went to go see? Someone shaking in the wind? Compromising? What, what did you go out to see? A man being clothed in fine linen? Is, is, is that what you went to see? Someone that is being clothed and fine linen is someone, and some of your versions may say soft clothing. So that's a, a clothing that you will see for, you know, when someone's having expensive clothing. He said, behold, those wearing soft things or expensive clothing are among the kings. He said, but what did you go out to see? He said, a prophet? He said, yes, I say to you, 
and one more excellent than a prophet. So this is, he's he's out here speaking about the coming Messiah. And he's saying he's more than a prophet. He's more excellent. He's talking about he's more excellent. He says, well, this is the one about whom it has been written. This is the one about whom it has been written. Behold, I sent out my messenger before your face who prepared your way before you. Okay, this is he who he said it has been written about that I will send out my messenger before your face who shall prepare your way before you. John is he. John is the one who prepared the way for Yahushua Messiah. So I want to read the precept to that. Malachi 3 and 1 says, Behold, I am sending my messenger and he will clear the way before me. And the master whom you are seeking shall suddenly come to his sanctuary. Even the, mes the messenger of the covenant whom you delight, behold, he comes, says Yah of hosts. Verse 11, truly I say to you, there has not, and you should still speaking to the crowd, say, truly I say to you, there is not arisen among you born of a woman any greater than John the Baptist but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. And so Yahushua is saying, and we're talking about men, because there were some great men when you think about Moses, you think about Noah, you think about Abraham. Yahushua is saying, uh, any man, earthly man, who was born of a woman, there is no one greater than John the Baptist. Not Moses, not Noah, not Abraham. He said, there's anyone from anyone who was born of a woman, there's no one greater. Now this is coming from John the Baptist. This is coming from Messiah. He's speaking about John. He said, there's no one of, when he's speaking about earthly on this earth, that's born of an earthly woman, there's no one that's greater than John the Baptist. He prepared the way for Yahushua. He immersed him. He is the forerunner. He set and laid the foundation to prepare the people about the coming king. He said, Yahushua himself said in verse 11, there's none that came from a woman that's greater, that was born of a woman that's greater than John the Baptist. He says, but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So as great as he was on this earth, Yahushua is making, there is nothing greater than what's happening on this earth cannot compare to what he has prepared for us in heaven. And we know the kingdom is coming down, the new heaven and the new earth. And so it said, so he says, so he, what he's saying is that there's a difference. Even those who are the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John because there's no comparison to what's on this earth to that which is in heaven, if you understand what I'm saying. So verse 12, he says, but the days of John the Baptist until now, he says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. He said the violent are robbing it. They're seizing it. They're taking it by force for all the prophets and the laws prophesy unto now. So we see it's this happening. We see the, the good news. Look what these so-called pastors are doing to it. Look what they're teaching about Messiah. That he came to do away with the law of his father. With his teachings and his instruction. Look what they're doing, look at the condition and the spiritual, let's look at the spiritual condition of the church today and you will see. And so the true good news is has been hijacked. <laughs> it's not being preached. They're not preaching in the churches on repentance for the remission of your sins, forgiveness of your sins. They're not preaching on the good news of the coming kingdom. They're not. This was the good news that he said to preach about his coming kingdom and to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of Yah is at hand. 
Verse 13, he says, for all the prophets and the laws prophesy until John. So the prophets, Isaiah, Malachi, they all prophesy. And the, uh, for all the prophets and the law, and the law itself prophesy until John. And verse 14 says, and if you are willing to receive, if you're willing to receive it, he said, if you're willing to receive it, if you're willing to accept this, because many people are not willing to receive it. But he said, this is Elijah who was to come. The ones having ears to hear, let him hear. So is Yahushua saying that John the Baptist is Elijah? He says the one having ears to hear, let him hear. And I think I've already read this. Yeah, I had this. It's on here twice. So Let's let's unpack this for a moment because there I mean there was confusion about who Messiah was as well as who John the Baptist. And so Messiah is not saying that John is literally Elijah. John comes in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Let's read Mark 17 verse 10 through 13. Mark 17 verses 10 through 13. And his disciples asked him, saying, <clears throat> why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And answering, Yahushua said to them, Elijah indeed will come first so that all things might be fulfilled. But I say to you, behold, Elijah has come and they did not know him, but did to him what they, whatever they desired. So also the son of man is about to suffer by them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them about John the Baptist. So they didn't understand what he was saying first because you know that John the Baptist was beheaded, okay? We know that he was beheaded. And so he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. And he said, not only did John the Baptist suffer, he said, the son of man is about to suffer by them. Okay. And so some of well, he did, he, he, the Messiah said that he is him. John the Baptist witnesses about himself in John 1, and I'm going to read verses 19 through 23. John chapter 1, verse 19. And this is the witness of John. Let me say this again. And this is the witness of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites that they might ask him, Who are you? And he confessed. And did not deny. He said, yea, he acknowledged, I am not the Messiah. So John told him, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said to them, what? I am not. So here we have it in scripture. Remember Yahushua, when, they, when, they, when John sent his disciples to ask about him, he pointed them to the word. So this is, the scripture is telling you, John 1 and 23, He's telling you his witness in scripture. He said, I am not the Messiah. Because I believe Herod thought that uh, John <laughs> the Baptist was the Messiah because when he was doing works, he's like, I thought I'd be him. Like, him. You know, he don't resurrect it. But he says, I am not the Messiah, verse 21. And then they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he says, I am not. He says, I am not. They said, well, are you a prophet? He answered, no. Then they said, well, who are you that we may give an answer to those sending us? What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yah, as Isaiah the prophet said. So he acknowledged that he is, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not Elijah, but I am a voice crying in the wilderness. He came in the spirit and the power of Elijah, but he was not Elijah. Okay, so I want to go back for a moment because there's something that I would like to point out. So 
again, Yahusha reminded when when they when John sent his two disciples to Yahusha to ask him, are you the one to come or are we to look for another one? Are you the one we've been waiting on to expect in one? And Yahushua again reminded him of the word that has been said about him and what he would do when he returned or when he came, okay? But I want to point you to something. When John the Baptist asked the Messiah, are you the coming one? Are we, or are we to look to someone else? I want you to think about where John is at this time. John is in prison. And Yahushua responds by pointing him to the word He responds by pointing John to the word, to a prophecy spoken of him in the word through the prophet Isaiah. And so I want to reread Matthew chapter 11, verses four through six. Matthew 11, verse four says, an answer Yahushua said to them, go back to John and report what you hear and have seen. So I pointed out and just, I wanted to just bring out the things that are said in Isaiah, that the prophet Isaiah said about him. And this is what Yahushua told John's disciple in verse five. He says, this is what you go back and, and report to John. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is being preached to the poor. And so there is a mystery that is hidden. I would like to read something that was pointed out to me while I was preparing. Again, Yahushua points John to the word. And I keep saying that because I want this to stick in our heads. When we have any questions about Yada Father, about Yahushua, Yahushua points John to the word. He points him directly to Isaiah 35. But he begins at verse five. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised and the good news is preached. So I want you to look at verse five because this is Matthew 11 verse five. Yahushua points John to the words that the prophet Isaiah spoke. I mean, yeah, Isaiah in Isaiah 35. But there is something that I missed and then I had to go back. And so notice where this arrow is pointing. The blind receive sight. This is where he begins to preach or to to uh, point John to in Isaiah 35. He begins telling about the, the blind receiving sight and the deaf hearing and the lepers, you know, walk, uh, the lepers being cleansed. And so I want you to pay attention to something. I want to reread Isaiah 35, but I'm not going to begin at verse five. Because Isaiah 35, verse 5, is where Yahushua points John to. But he didn't begin at verse 3. And I'm like, well, why was this left out? So let's read this. Isaiah 35, verse 3 through 6. Make 
So he says, make the weak hand strong, strengthen the feeble knees. Say to those of a hasty heart, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your Elohim will come with vengeance, with the full dealing of Elohim. He will come and save you. So I want you, I'm going to stop right here. And I want you to look at what we've read so far. This is what he did not say to John. Remember, when we're reading in, in Matthew 11, in Matthew 11, verse 5, is where the Messiah begins. This is Isaiah 35, verse 5. This is where the Messiah began. The eyes of the blind will be open. He says, you go take this to John, that the eyes of the blind will be open. The ears of the deaf will be open. The lame shall leap like a deer. The tongue of the dumb shall sing. The water shall break out in the wilderness and streams in the desert. He quotes Isaiah and he gives him, he points him to the word. This is how you will know I am he. But he says here, but look at, look at verse three through three and four. Make the weak hands strong, strengthen the feeble knees. Say to those of a hasty heart, be strong. Do not fear. Behold, your Elohim will come with vengeance with the full dealing of Elohim. He will come and save you. I want you to look at this. He will come and he will save you. When you think about vengeance, vengeance is after, because he said, I will repay. Normally when someone takes re vengeance, it's after the fact. It's after something has already occurred with the full dealing. He says, because I'm going to deal with this. So you think about if something happened to you. And then the father, Yah, comes. Like, I will use myself as an example. <laughs> if someone stole money off my card and they stole money that someone sent as a love offering for the ministry. And I began to pray a prayer. I called on, see, Yah has, a, I called on Yah hosts because when you call on him as Yah hosts, he is your defender. And I called on him as Yah of hosts to come and to defend and to go after those who, who stole money that was meant to bless me for the ministry. And I tell you, it was three, oh, it was $300 that was stolen off my card. And it was like on a Monday and by Friday I had all my money back because I wasn't sure I was going to get it back because it was stolen off my cash app card. But yeah, I returned it all. And see, I don't know, but I know he dealing with them. I don't even have to ask. I don't need to see it because I already know my yah and I know how he comes to my defense. I already know because it was no guarantee that I was going to get that money back. I, I did not know if I was getting it back because it was on the cash app card, not my bank card. And so when you look here, it says he will come and he will save you. He will come and he will save you. And so I want to ask a question. And this question I'm going to ask you is what the Ruach dropped in my heart. What does salvation do? What does salvation do? What does salvation do?
Okay, so let's go to the um, ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible for salvation. Okay. Now, it means to rescue. When It says, when one of the flock is in trouble, the shepherd rescues it. Say this again. It means to rescue. When one of the flock is in trouble, the shepherd rescues it. It means to save or savior, to deliver, to help, to preserve, to defend. John is in prison. He baptized him. He's already seen him. He's called him the Lamb of Yah. Yet he's asking, are you the one? Are you the, the expected one? Are you the coming one? Are you the Messiah? Or should we be looking for somebody else? Because I'm, I'm in prison. When he came, he thought like the kingdom was coming. Like, am I going to have, like, why am I not being saved right now? Why I'm in, I'm in prison. Because John is arrested. He's being arrested. He was seized and put in prison because of Herod. Herod put him there because he told him that your 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 um <laughs> your marriage is unlawful. He married his Herod married his brother's uh his brother Philip. He married his wife. And John told him that it was unlawful. And so John's witness against Herod's marriage is the reason why he's in jail. So his witness against Herod, marrying his, his, because it tells you in Leviticus 18, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. Was this, this wasn't in the case of Philip who had no sons. I've heard people say that, that he actually divorced his wife and marry him, uh, marry his brother's wife. Whatever the case may be, it was unlawful. And so this is consistent. Him calling out Herod, calling out sin, his sin is consistent with John the Baptist's ministry to call out the sin. So call, to call people to repentance, that is his ministry. And so what he was doing with Herod is consistent with what he's been doing. Telling people to repent for the kingdom of Yah, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was a forerunner. And so salvation, because the Ruach put that in my spirit, asked this question, what does salvation do? Salvation, according to the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible, because you can, you can see the name, the name right there, Yeshua, rescue. When one of the flock is in trouble, the shepherd rescues it. John is in prison. Yahushua did not quote verses three and four, especially verse four, where he says that he will come to save you, to rescue you, to preserve you, to, pre to preserve your life. John is asking a question. If you're him, why am I in here? And so as we think about this question, what does salvation do? What you what what came, what was given to me is eternal life. And that's what the rock dropped in my in my spirit. Salvation brings eternal life. But you who should never promise that he would save us in this life. We were never promised. He never promised us that I'm going to save you in this life because he says in this life, you will have trouble. In this life, you will have sorrow. You will suffer hardship. In this life, he says that you will suffer much tribulation in order to enter into the kingdom. He told us that we will have hardship. 
We would suffer. We would have trials and tribulation. But he said, I pray to you that your heart don't fail. He had told me earlier in the year to pray that our heart do, does not fail because we are getting ready to come upon those times. Something is going to be happening over this next year that's going to change the very course of everything that we have known since we've been on this earth. They're setting things up. We have to know that he told us that we would suffer much. He told even the apostle Paul how much he was going to have to suffer for him. Yahushua, our Messiah, promised us eternal life. Eternal life, everlasting life. But he never promised to save us in this life. For he who tries to save his life, the scripture says he will lose it. And so the reality is, is that John was going to die. John was going to die in Yahushua was not going to rescue him in this life. He was not going to come and get him out of prison in this life. He was not getting ready to save him. As when you read Isaiah 35, verses 3 and 4, verse 4 says he was going to come and save him. He didn't begin there. He began at verse 5. Go and tell John this. He's asking, am I him? Am I the Messiah? He pointed him back to the word, Isaiah 35, but he didn't start at verse three and four. He pointed him at five and six, where it began with the blind, now receiving sight. Those who could not walk and now leap and jump and the dead are being raised. The poor is being preached the good news, but he never said that I'm coming to save you, that I'm rescuing you out of this prison. He never said that I'm getting ready to save you. Messiah was not going to save John the Baptist's earthly life because John the Baptist was fulfilling his mission. He was fulfilling his mission. I want to read Mark chapter six, verse three. Mark chapter six, verse three reads. Is this one not the carpenter, the son of Miriam, the brother of Jacob and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended in him. You see, Herod is, is, is like many others, and they don't want to admit it. But the question I asked you in the beginning is, are you offended at me? Are you offended in Yahushua? Are you offended? Are you offended at what is required in order to enter into the kingdom? That's why he told them, count the cost. Because many, think about what Paul went through. I've been in need and want. I've, you know, I've had things. I've been destitute. He don't went through a lot, beaten, persecuted. But what will take you away from the love of Yah? neither life nor death. When they found out what the cost was, what they was going to have to get the rich man, what he was going to give up, saw his belongings to give it to the poor, he was very sad. He didn't have anything. Oh, I haven't done that. I haven't cursed my mother. I haven't committed adultery. But I'm done. You know, I kept all these things. I'm like, okay, we'll give all your money away to the poor and follow me. When many find out the cost, 
what they're going to have to give up in this life in order to follow him, in order to receive eternal salvation. They're offended. When they have to realize, when, when many realize they have to leave their, this life and hate their life, and I'm talking about this earthly life, when they realize they have to lose their life to save it, they're offended. The Pharisees were offended at by at many of Yahushua's teachings. They were offended. And many people are offended at the persecutions. They're, they're offended and they were upset because he called them out on their traditions. That they wanted to have the oral law. They want to keep their father's traditions and make his word null and void. They teach for doctrine the commandments of men. People follow the commandments of men more than they do Yahushua. You make my word null and void. You teach it for doctrines, the commandments of men, as if it is my word. So many people are upset because he spoke out against their traditions. Many people are offended when they have to come out from among them and be separate. And so returning to his hometown They were offended by his authority. They were offended by his power. You talking about a coming kingdom? We, we, we <laughs> no, there's no kingdom greater than mine. When he's when they were admiring the buildings, he said, "Don't even admire them because not one stone upon another is gonna be be up." But don't even admire this. When you come in talking about tearing down their kingdom. And setting up yours, they were offended by his authority, by his powers, and they were offended by his teaching. Even our people, Yasharel, we want a king. When you read First Samuel 8, that's how idols develop in us. When we take our eyes off of Yah to focus on others, that's when we have idols. And so they wanted a king. And he was like, look, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. They're rejecting me. They're offended. They, we want a king. We want to be like everybody else. That's what they said. And so Yahushua is coming. He's telling them about his coming kingdom. And they don't want him they're rejecting him is this one not the carpenter the son of miriam the brother of jacob and joseph and judas and simon and are not his sisters here with us and they were offended in him they were offended and so this is the definition for messiah this is the definition for messiah it means smeared. You see that, Messiah? You see that? It means smeared. One who is smeared with oil as a sign of authority, a prophet, a priest, or a king, anointed, Messiah. It means smeared. One who is smeared with oil as a sign of authority. They were offended at his authority of him being king and priest because he's speaking about who he is. As I was preparing this message and thinking about his name, Yahushua, Yah saves or the salvation of Yah. I heard the Ruach say it's in the name. It's in the name. Scripture tells us that Mary will bear a son. 
and that he will be called Yahushua because he would save his people from their sins. He would save his people from their sins. Let me say this again. He would save his people from their sins. When you read Revelations, and I don't have the exact chapter offhand, but those who were behead, those who had already lost their life, were crying out, when are you going to take vengeance? When you, when, for the blood, for what was shed? And he said, wait, just a little while longer. Because the rest of your brethren, for those who are getting ready to come in, those who are about to be killed. He didn't say, I'm getting ready to save them from being beheaded. There are many of us who are listening to the sound of my voice right now because it's going to be going down. We're the crunch time is here. And if you're not willing to lose your life, if you're trying to save your life, this life, you will not see eternal life because he who saves his life will lose it. But those who lose their life for his name's sake will obtain eternal life. He is the salvation of Yah. He saves. The Ruach told me it's in the name. Scripture tells us why he was to be called Yahushua. Because he would save his people, but from their sins. You you might go, you may, you may be like John. He pointed John, he answered John by pointing him to the scriptures in Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. That's that Isaiah prophesied the works that the Messiah would be doing when he came. But he didn't quote verse four where he said that I will save you. Because John wasn't going to be saved. John was, the, unfortunately, the reality is he was going to die. There are many of us who may die. The 144,000 after their ministry of witnessing they're going to die and he's going to allow it. But he said that he was going to take vengeance. Vengeance is after the fact. Like if someone killed your mother or your father and you go out to take vengeance to repay them for what was done. Yah is judgment is here now. He said he was going to deal with the nation that came and got his people because he said, you took it too far. He told Abraham that after those 400 years, he was going to deal with those people who came and got him. He said he was going to deal with them. But he didn't say that we wasn't going to be enslaved for 400 years. That was part of our punishment. Because we disobeyed him. But he still said, I'm going to deal with them. He said, I'm going to repay that nation. I'm going to repay them. Yah is going to deal with all of our enemies, Yasharel. You don't have to go out and out here yelling and screaming and preaching hate and talking about, that is not your, he says, vengeance is mine. It's not for you to be worried about what is going to happen. He's going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them. Not you. Our job is to show the light that is in us. And this is not even so much about that, about who getting ready to lick your feet and all of that stuff. 
and about who who it nation he gonna repay and he gonna repay Esau and all this like just you wasting time. John announced the coming Messiah. He announced that the Messiah was coming. And today, you and I announced that the Messiah has come. Let me say this again. John announced that the Messiah was coming. But today, you and I announced that the Messiah has come. We announced that he has not only come, but he has died for our sins. And he was resurrected after the third day. And then he will return again. That's our job. Yah will repay. He will repay. He says, vengeance is mine. It's not ours. This is not our battle. He will deal with him. Take anything that anyone has done, you offended, take it to the Father, Yah. But John, he never told, just as John, he never said that I'm getting ready to save you. John was going to die and that was reality. John is having doubts. Are you the Messiah? Why am I here? What, what, like, or, or should I be looking to somebody else? Because I'm going, I'm in prison. Why haven't you come to save me? How many times do we go through things in life and we're like, well, why is he not doing anything? Why is, you know, he's not answering me. I'm praying, but I'm not hearing anything. He's not, he hasn't done anything. He hasn't come to save me. I'm going through. Why hasn't he rescued me? Sometimes we can pray and we can fast, but his, whatever his will is, it will be. And I think oftentimes we all, offended at his will or we're offended at the fact that many of us will die for his name's sake but blessed are those who die for his name's sake blessed are you when you're persecuted and you're being thrown out of uh, churches when you're being put in prison for his name's sake the disciples were shouting for joy when they were released because they were in prison for his namesake. He said in this life, you're going to suffer hardship. In this life, you will have trouble. In this life, you will have sorrow. But this is not our home. This is not our eternal destination if you are in Yahushua. He said, I go to prepare a place. I can't tell you the amount of suffering that I've gone through. And I'm like, wow, why am I suffering so much? I've been through so much. I'm still suffering. You can come in and say, why am I going through so much? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. But sometimes it may not be that he's going to deliver you. Yes, yes. We have to pray what his will is and yes. have to accept it. Yes. I want to um, read John 16, 33. I was just led to this. It says, have I told you these things? No, I'm sorry. I have told you these things that you might have peace in me. In the world, you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Another one said, this is another version. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. That's John 16, 33. Hallelujah. Yes. And um, I'm telling you, yes, this was awesome because uh, like you, um, like uh, how John felt in the prison, you know, we all have 
experience our moment of this being offended or wondering, am I being heard? Is my prayers going to get answered? And just understanding that those that follow the Messiah, you, he gave us in order to endure to the end, you must suffer trials and tribulations, but you have to endure to the end. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. when our trials and tribulation is extended or, ex you know, to the extreme where you may feel like you can't bear or handle. And that's when we start questioning or um seeking yah to why he's not hearing us you understand what i'm saying but mm -hmm. and and sometimes when we go through yah's will like you said may not be how we plan it in our head <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> you know, or I'm what we about his date, he coming, and I'm like, that's why he was right, like, oh, what yeah. we expect, and how we expect him to save or deliver us or to come through for us, you know. And so sometimes behind the scenes, we can try to work things out on our own and still fail. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, this was well needed in this hour. I'm telling you. Um, and I too have not, you know, I've read, uh, you know, of course, Matthew 11, but I'm saying as far as honing in and, and closely reading, um, the question that John mm -hmm. poses to the Messiah, um, are you the one to come or are we to look for another, you know, and, and just really examining what john was really saying here mm -hmm. and i love I, like how you did that like showing his doubting but also how you went to isaiah mm -hmm. to give that scripture on on um the precept to yahusha pointing him back to the word to strengthen him to let him know that without saying i am the messiah you know or yes mm -hmm. or no but saying, look, it's in the word. This, you know, I've done this. You, you, you prepared the way for me. Um, but you know, I may not come save you like you expect me to save you, but you, you know, it's just we have to endure to the end. And yeah, when things don't always go as go the way plan, plan. yeah. And we think that something yes. so oftentimes we will begin to doubt. Sometimes yeah. we'll creep mm -hmm. in and and um, you know, we have, you know, each and every one of us can say at some point, you yeah. have had that mm -hmm. um where you wondering like what's going on. But he said that what in his word, if you're in him, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. Oftentimes yeah. it's we're forsaken because we have left him. He is Absolutely. not left us. Absolutely. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. So for any and everything we mm -hmm. need is in his word. He mm -hmm. pointed him to the word to remind him. Okay. Yeah. What do you see going on? These are the things that's going on. Go and report what you're seeing. And then he will know because John knows that word. He yes. spoke of me, so and he knew what I would do when I come. So when you go take this back to him, he will know that I am he. But he never said that he was gonna save him. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He 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 didn't know he was gonna have to die. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I and this is just like going over the definition of salvation and Messiah. Wow, that was you know in, in itself, you know, and just honing in going back to trials and tribulations and um bringing up revelations um that was revelation 6 and 11 sis with okay. um, waiting on your brothers wait a little while you mm -hmm. know for those and just showing that you know some of us will die for you know and be personal you have that can you read it? Yes, yes. Hold on, let me go back to it. Hold on one second. Oh, yeah, right. so I mean, we have to understand that, you know, when things, like Paul, you think about all the things he talked about that he suffered. When the man, when Yahushua told him to leave his father who was sick and to come follow yeah. me, 
And he told him to let the dead bury the dead. Like a lot of people were offended at that. Why would he tell him to leave? Or when he says that, when they, when he says that, um, when they ask him, your brothers, your sisters, you know, they all here calling you your mother. He was like, well, who's my mother? Who's my brother? My sisters. And he pointed to his disciples. Here, my, yeah. mother, my brothers. He yeah. said, those who do the will of Yah. And so your family are those who do the will of Yah. Many people are offended at that. Absolutely. They're offended by that. Many people don't want to admit it, but Many people are offended at the word. Yeah. We yeah. have to realize your family are those who are doing the will of Yah. Mm -hmm. Because as those that are not doing the will will not be here. They Absolutely. will not be there. And it's, you know, it's a scripture. Do you, do you now hate, hate me? Hate me because <laughs> I tell you the tell truth. You the truth. <laughs> yeah. Do you hate me now because I tell you the truth? Yeah, the man, he when the rich man, he found out he was going to have to give up everything. He was offended. He walked away. He was sad. Mm -hmm. So Revelations, I'm going to start with verse 10 and then 11. Mm -hmm. says, and then this is Revelation 6, verses 10 through 11. And then a loud cry. I mean, I'm sorry. And they cried, a, cried out in a loud voice. How long, O oh Yah, holy and true? until you avenge our blood and judge those who dwell upon the earth. Then each of them was given a white robe and, and told to rest a little while longer until a full number of their fellow servants, their brothers were killed just as they had been killed. Mm -hmm. Don't you see it right there? Mm -hmm. They were given white robes. They were killed and they're and and they were going to be killed just as their brothers yeah yeah so then he said wait a little while longer uh, to the rest of them have been yes it. yes wait a while hold on let me go back wait a while i'm i'm sorry is this it yeah um hold on it says and to each of them were given white robes and it was said to them that they shall rest yet a little while, a little time until their fellow servants should also be, you know, um, complete and their brothers and those being about to be killed as they had been killed. Mm -hmm. So the, they were about to be killed. Yeah. And that was the brother. They're the, those who will be beheaded. Rest so, a while. Yeah. So it's it, he never said that he he never he came to save us because when i was thinking about the name yusha and the rock say it's in the name mm -hmm. yeah, the means y'all say is or the salvation of yah yahusha yeah. is yah's salvation mm -hmm. okay that's what his name means because it says that he, he was called that because it said that he will save his people from their sins saving us yeah. from sin that's what he nailed to the tree the law of sin and death the judgments that were against us for not keeping the law of Yah, for not keeping his teachings and his instructions. That was what was nailed to the tree, not the law of Yah. Yeah. Romans chapter eight, verse two, it tells you that he set us free from the law of sin and death. Yeah, yeah. Romans chapter seven speaks of two different laws. Apostle, the apostle Paul speaks of two different laws. He's speaking of the law of Yah and the law of sin. And Yahushua set us free and nailed to the tree the law of sin and death, mm -hmm. not the law of Yah. And so when you have that understanding that there are two laws that he's speaking of, this will open up your understanding to the scriptures and the rest of what Paul's writing says. And so this yeah. was the message today. And I yeah. believe that y'all wanted this because yeah. uh, this was dropped in my spirit yesterday to read. Um, and I was actually driving to work when it was dropped in my spirit um, in the morning on my way to work to read Matthew 11 because of the times I believe that we're getting yeah. ready to come upon. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to have to know that some of us will be in prison. Yeah. Some of us will lose our life. You're going to be persecuted. And if you're offended because of his namesake, because of your beliefs and yeah. Messiah,
because you believe in the word of Yah as it is written. He is the living word of Yah. And yes. if we're offended by him in yeah. him, mm -hmm. you you won't see the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was the message today. Yeah, I feel there. like it's kind of like mm -hmm. just the message because there's some a lot of times we bring in these messages, is always something behind it. It's like the suffering. Yeah. Many of us just getting us prepared to know mm -hmm. that what the cost is to walk with Yah, what the yeah. cost is mm -hmm. to be in Messiah. Yeah. Okay. It's a cost. Yeah. And it's going to cost you, for many of us, it's going to cost us this life. It, it costs you this life because we're told to die. Yeah. Okay. Die to self. Mm-hmm. And the Messiah did. You know, he, he prophesied that, you know, that if, if he was hated, and you will be too. Yes, he did. He did that. He said that. So yeah. don't, don't count it. As strange, yeah. That people hate you. Yeah. Don't find it as strange that when you go into places because of your light, they hate you. Yeah. Light drives out darkness. Don't count it a strange thing that you suffer, that you're mistreated. These are the things, and that he's reminding me right now, even as I speak, why you may be encountering and going through some of the things that you're going through on your job, um, you know, um, maybe with people in your family, maybe it's with people you don't know, but yeah. we should yeah. expect it. Yeah. When you walk with him, expect it. Yeah. Then uh, don't count it as a strange thing. Don't yeah. look at it. Oh, why is this happening? Oh, he told you in the word. Mm -hmm. If you serve me. Mm hmm. You follow Messiah. He said, you're going to be hated. Yeah. And you're going to suffer. Period. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. This is on point. And I, like I said, I have never honed in onto this scripture like that. And this was. I hadn't even, I'm uh, honest, I didn't even yeah. ever seen that question. Yeah. To be honest. I read that before I missed it. Yeah. I, I don't even remember that question. And I was like, what how long is this? I had never even read it. I read it, but I didn't read it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so we thank you for joining us today. We pray that this message bless you in some way and just prepared us for what we what we may each encounter. Um, they're ramping up things uh, and getting their little systems in place and and they are already planning got plans for us but we will we will not fear for what man can do to us we do not fear he the, who can kill the body but let us fear the one who can kill both the body and the soul if they can take the body that's all they got if they can't take our soul they can't take our salvation we have to not we cannot be cowards whatever is persecution you made. They're going to threaten you. Say, oh, if you don't take this mark, you won't be able to buy or sell. So what you going to do? Are you going to take this mark so you can buy or sell? When they tell you, oh, well, you're going to lose your job if, if if you do this or you can't, you know, honor the Sabbath. They're, gonna, they're getting ready to come down. They already tell you, oh, well, you got to work on the Sabbath. I already told them, I'm not working on the Sabbath. I've already said I'm not working, so you can have whatever professional development y'all have on the Sabbath. I won't be there, okay? I won't be there, man. Whatever they decide to do, they can do, and because y'all is the one who can open and close doors, and that's where we have to really put our trust in him in this hour and accept whatever his will is, and sometimes we, we might not know where to go. But I pray that this message blessed you. I pray that it just prepares your heart. If those of you who have been anxious, if you have been going through things lately, I pray that you would just keep this message in your heart. Um, and I pray that it will bring you hope and bring you comfort and bring you at least peace with 
if you have to accept whatever his will is, because sometimes we don't always go as we claim we have our thoughts on how we think when we're going through something, how we feel that we want to be rescued and how we want him to come and save us. And when that doesn't happen, then we're offended. But why is he not doing it? Well, I thought you was going to do it this way. I, I, and so, you know, we're all growing in this walk. And let's just have grace with one another and not be so quick to go as soon as you see something wrong. Oh, let me go do a video. Because that's that's all we do. And it's really, it's, it's really um, distasteful when we attack one another and we want to, oh, I have some knowledge. So let me come and tell you what you're doing wrong. Like you've been living holy and righteous your whole life. Let us have grace with one another and show mercy to one another during these times because if we know he's not going to show it to us. Remember, the, the, especially when you know someone is a part of the body that maybe they just might not know. They may make you off. We're so harsh to one another. We Even when we share the truth, the scripture tells us we here to do it with the spirit of gentleness. And that is what I'm seeing. There's not a spirit of gentleness. The spirit of gentleness it has to do with being cautious. Being circumspect and not just how we walk, but cautious of how we deal with one another, how we speak to one another, how we treat one another. Even when sharing the truth of correcting one another in love, it is we are told to do it with the spirit of gentleness. And I don't see that. I don't want nobody yelling in my ear with no bullhorn and nobody telling me I'm going to hell because I don't understand something. And many of you in this Israelite walk need to repent. Because y'all's not pleased with your Pharisee behavior. Okay, and so I wanted to say that. And so I pray that y'all will bless and keep you. That he will make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That he will lift up his covenants upon you and give you peace. We pray for you and we will continue to pray for you all. That your faith will not fail. That you will remain steadfast. That you will continue to endure to the end. That you might be saved. And that if you are in any sins, have any secret sins, that you that God will reveal them and that you will repent and turn away from your sins. We implore you to repent for the kingdom of Yah is at hand. Continue to endure and to remain firmly fixed and rooted in your life. And if you have any questions, any doubt, anything you want to know about him, do what he did. Go to the scriptures. The word of Yah will, will give you the understanding and clarity to, and answer any questions that you have. Okay? And so that's my last word for today. And we pray that you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Oh, you're 
Thank you. 